Who is Rocco Morabito, the second most wanted mafia boss in Italy? Well, a magician of escapology and leading boss in Italian crime is the subject of today's video. The news that Rocco Morabito has been arrested in Brazil has certainly travelled across the globe. This is because Morabito is one of the most important crime syndicate bosses not only in Italy but across the world. Moreover, he was the main actor of one of the most surprising escapes from prison only two years ago. Morabito's is a life always on the edge, but with all the possible and imaginable luxuries. Morabito, both at the time of his first arrest and that of a few days ago, had not renounced his life as a rich businessman. Far from the idea of the super secretive boss hiding in an underground bunker under a house, he lived in a luxurious residence in Joao Pessoa in the state of Paraíba in northeastern Brazil. He was so confident nobody would find him that he was with another important criminal wanted for drug trafficking, Vincenzo Paschino. When the police approached them, the two men were shocked but didn't try to escape. Only Matteo Messina Denaro is considered more dangerous than Rocco Morabito, and that tells you all you need to know about this legendary Ndrangheta boss. And by the way, if you haven't yet seen our video on Matteo Messina Denaro, you really should check it out. But as I was saying, Rocco Morabito is feared and considered incredibly dangerous. Rocco Morabito is second on the list of the 100 most dangerous fugitives, bettered only by the ever elusive and impossible to catch Matteo Messina Denaro. Morabito is, to all intents and purposes, the number one of the Calabrian Ndrangheta in particular of the Andrina of the Locride area. And this is a criminal organisation that has become one of the most important in the world in drug trafficking. Its network extends all over the world with very high level agreements with Colombian drug traffickers. And as many of you know, we've created a few videos on the Ndrangheta on our channel. Although incredibly powerful and influential, Ndrangheta is a lot less known than the Sicilian Mafia or the American Cosa Nostra. But back to Rocco Morabito's life in the Ndrangheta. His life is as adventurous as a movie about a gangster. Born in 1966 in Africo in the region of Locri in Calabria, he is the nephew of another historical boss of the Ndrangheta, Giuseppe Morabito, called Utiradrito. Yes, that guy we discussed at length in our other videos. From a very young age, Rocco Morabito managed to get noticed by the police and in 1988, during his university studies in Messina, he was arrested for threatening a professor. But in 1989 and in the following years, his life changed deeply. First, his brother Leo was killed in a mafia ambush in Africa. And in 1990, he himself was wounded with a pistol shot in the foot. He's also identified in a meeting in Campania with Alberto Benaduce, a Camorra drug dealer. For Rocco Morabito, known as Utamunga for the fact that he uses the DKW Munga off-road vehicle as a car, it's time to leave Locride that is no longer safe for him. And in 1991, he moves to Milan. In Milan, Rocco Morabito enters the drug trafficking organization run by his uncle, Domenico Molica. Here, he quickly climbs the hierarchies, becoming one of the leading players of the Milanese drug trafficking scene. He quickly becomes incredibly rich and has a dream villa built in a place called Casarille, which has now been seized by the police and has become a library of all things. Together with Molica, he's photographed in 1994 at a summit together with several Colombian drug trafficking bosses. 1994 was another key year in the life of Morabito, and thanks to the operation Fortaleza and its trial, Rocco Morabito is sentenced to 30 years in prison for membership in a mafia crime syndicate and drug trafficking. It's at this time that Morabito escapes and lives in hiding, while the police put him on the list of the most dangerous fugitives. And from that moment on, he becomes a true ghost, whilst acting as one of the great puppeteers of the drug trade across the world. In that period of more than 20 years, it's impossible to uncover any news about him. Indeed, Morabito became an elusive ghost for over 20 years. This guy is starting to sound a lot like Kaiser Sosa, and if you pardon the movie reference, but 
This guy is no fictional movie character. In fact, he's almost never mentioned in any investigative reports concerning the Ndrina of Locride, of which he is indisputably the boss. The only one who has proven to be even better than Morabito at becoming a ghost is, as already mentioned, Matteo Messina Denaro. Italian investigators, however, were certain that Morabito, wherever he was, continued to personally manage the drug trafficking run by the Ndrangheta. They're not wrong, but what they couldn't imagine is that he wasn't hiding in some underground hideout in Locride, as most Ndrangheta bosses do, even when they're fugitives. But instead, Morabito is enjoying the good life of luxury in South America. Rocco Morabito had been arrested before in South America. Oh yeah, in Uruguay to be more precise. The unforeseeable turning point came in 2017 when, thanks to a series of favourable coincidences and the skill of the investigators, he was found in Uruguay in Punta del Este, where he lived in a villa with a swimming pool together with his Angolan wife with a Portuguese passport. He was betrayed by a, a simple small oversight. He'd enrolled his daughter in school under her real name. And in that Brazilian town, Morabito lives an absolutely normal life, mixing amongst the people under the name of Francesco Antonio Capoletto Souza with a Brazilian passport. His fictitious job is that of a, an import-export entrepreneur. He's arrested in the room of a luxury hotel where he's been staying for a few days after a furious argument with his wife. And when he was arrested back then, he tried to deny his identity, but the investigators were certain that they had Rocco Morabito in hand. And they were right. And from what they found out after further inquiry, the police understood that Morabito had been living in that villa for at least 10 years. He'd certainly not stopped dealing in drugs, given the 13 cell phones and 12 credit cards at his disposal. And that appeared to be the end of a 25-year-long fugitive life. But the story of Rocco Morabito still had more chapters to it. Rocco Morabito was not extradited to Italy right away, and so he spent a good two years in Uruguayan prisons. In 2019, when the transfer to Italy seemed imminent, Rocco Morabito becomes a ghost again. With a daring escape in the company of three other prisoners, Leonardo Abel Sinopoli Atcogoa, Matthias Sebastian Acosca Gonzalez and Bruno Ezekiel Diaz. And try saying that quickly. <laughs> the four manage to dig a tunnel that allows them to reach an area of the penitentiary from which it's easier to escape. It's even assumed that the money to bribe the guards was collected from the Calabrian community present in Uruguay. And for another two years, there's no more news of Rocco Morabito. He goes back to being a ghost, just like he's so skilled at being. Everyone assumes he's still in South America, but nobody's certain. But even this time, Rocco Morabito doesn't change his nature or his habits. He continues to lead the Ndrangheta drug trafficking and restarts living a luxurious life whilst hiding amongst the common people. But all of a sudden, Morabito's traces emerge two years after his escape, when he meets up with Vincenzo Paschino, and that helps direct the police to search an exact area of Brazil. In fact, Rocco Morabito is still fully in the thick of the drug trafficking business. The meeting with Paschino confirms this very clearly. In only six days, the Italian prosecutor's office, together with the Brazilian prosecutor's office, with the help of the United States Drug Enforcement Agency, the DEA, and with the active collaboration of the FBI, managed to identify the meeting place where Rocco Morabito and Vincenzo Paschino were supposed to meet. As already mentioned, with this arrest, a double result of indubitable significance had been obtained, with the capture of two leading bosses who were leaders in international drug trafficking. As a reminder, not that he's been caught for the second time, Rocco Morabito must serve numerous sentences in Italy related to drug trafficking. In addition to the already mentioned 30-year sentence in Milan, Morabito has been sentenced to 22 years by the court of Palermo, and 10 years by the court of Reggio Calabria. All these sentences are always related to, of course, drug trafficking. To avoid him escaping again, Rocco Morabito has been transported to a secret location in Brazil whilst he awaits extradition. So watch this space with interest to see if there will be another enthralling chapter in the life of Rocco Morabito. Is he going to face justice in an Italian court? Or as before, 
Is this magician of escapology going to vanish once again into thin air? One thing that can be certain is that we here at Deeper Globalism will be there with a story as soon as it happens. And to make sure you don't miss it, please, of course, do subscribe. And as always, we do welcome your comments in the comments below. We do read them and we do act on them. So let us know your thoughts. Until next time, take care.